all right so uh, hello and welcome to this uh, next lecture in the ongoing series of lectures on digital filters this i think will be the last lecture in the uh, three part lecture that has now become on digital half toning i know this maybe for some of you it might uh, get a little bit uh, uh, you know heavy on on the heavier side but nonetheless it doesn't matter i have tried to explain uh, with a lot of clarity if there is something that uh, you don't understand right now don't worry about it there are uh, you know um, kind of uh, interactive classes that i conduct so no no problem regarding that okay so in the last lecture as far as i remember we had left off uh, discussing about our uh, one important concept that is how to determine uh, what is the number or what are the number of tones that is possible for a certain combination of ctp and a half tone screen combination so we use the formula a over l uh, squared uh, multiplied by g minus 1 where g was the number of gray levels uh, together and and one additional tone so one additional tone means that it is your uh, no tone actually so that was represented now in this lecture we will be taking that so let me just write it down once uh, for a better recall so number of tones can be written as a over l squared g my multiplied by g minus 1 plus 1 so this was the generic form right and we we saw one relationship that came out of it that is dpi that is the uh, resolution in which uh, ctp resolutions are measured that is that should be 10 times that of the lpi that is the resolution of the uh, your half tone screen so why that happened that we have already seen now in this diagram on the left hand side the plot over here you can see and i also explain something one important concept to you that is uh, the human eye is perceptible of detecting minimum of 100 tones uh, any anything beyond that if your gray scale is having tones below 100 then those individual tones will be understood by the or deciphered by the eye so we want we, we don't want that really. we want when we see an image especially when we see one half tone image that is discretized image we want that uh, it appears to be as continuous as possible that is what we intend so that is what we really want but the idea over here that i'm trying to you know bring about is the fact that when you are using any uh, image which is having or which is represented by tones less than 100 i think you will remember this because you have seen this as well in your uh, bit depth when we were discussing about bit, bit depth i had shown you four pictures if you see that picture also there you will see that i had shown four pictures in total so one was the first one i think was one bit second one was two bit third one was four bit and the final one was eight bit apart from the eight bit all the other images appear to be very much discontinuous that is discretized and the they are corresponding half tones but also very much discretized where we could understand each and every tone this effect is known as banding when you are able to understand different uh, uh, tones uh, within the gray scale or within the image that effect is basically known as banding effect so ultimately what we want is we want to uh, for any uh, output device and any uh, half tone screen combination we want that the minimum number of tones that is achieved using that combination should not go below 100 right now in this in this chart this chart has been represented graphically over here what they are suggesting is you see each of the curve each of the curve along the x axis we have got the input frequency that is screen frequency in lcm and along the x axis i uh, sorry along the y axis we have got the number of tonal values and this uh, output frequency is given along this direction right now what happens is you see that when we are using a combination of certain input frequency and a certain uh, screen frequency 
what is what are the number of tone values that we are obtaining that is being given in this particular all these curves so consider when we are using an output device of 600 then what is the how many number of tones are available to you when we are using a uh, screen frequency of uh, when we are using a screen of a certain frequency so that you can find out from this curve basically so now if we consider that what will be if this this is a experiment i mean this is this curve has been derived uh, experimentally so this is a standard curve now you see how to read this curve so if you are able to read this curve then automatically this chart will also make sense let us first try to read this curve what is going to happen so for let us say a output device which is having an addressable resolution of 600 uh, lcm uh, lpcm that translates to about 1524 dpi right now the question over here is that if a we are using a output resolution i mean ctp having addressable resolution 600 then how many tones are achieved for a certain frequency screen frequency that is what we are after so here as you can see in the curve it is given only for a screen frequency combination of 60 lpcm and a output resolution of 600 lcm how many tones are available 100 100 tones are available so ultimately total number of tones available is 100 plus 1 how did i get this simply plug in those values in this formula plug in which values plug in the value of 600 here and plug in the value of the 60 60 lines per uh, centimeter of the input resolution screen frequency here and automatically g is always 2 in our case in printing case offset printing case so it is 1 thereby 600 by 60 uh, squared means 100 plus 1 that is 101 so this makes sense we are getting this value right so that means this point is 100 okay so now consider what will be the value of here it is given uh, 80 so let us consider that value 80 will be somewhere uh, in this range right 80 will be somewhere in this range or maybe a little bit uh, little bit actually it should have been a little bit left of that okay. let me just draw it properly so 80 will be somewhere over in this in this particular range right if it is in this particular range then it is somewhere over here so this value corresponds to how many tones this value corresponds to as it is given over here you see 57 tones if you plug in the value of 600 in a and value of 80 in l and square it you will find out it comes roughly to be 57 uh, 56 sorry so total number of tones that you will get so this will be 56 actually so total number of tones you will get that is 56 plus 1 that is 57 okay now what happens when we increase the uh, the addressable resolution of the ctp now if we increase the addressable resolution of the ctp to 1000 for the same value of 60 or 60 we are not getting actually so let us consider uh, 100 for the addressable resolution of 100 what will be the number of tones available so 100 you are getting 100 only 100 value right so what will be the total number of uh, tones that are available that is 100 plus 1 that is 101 now one thing so this is how you read the card so that where value which value we are getting like the 101 see 1000 lpcm and 100 lpcm 1000 is the output value output frequency value and 100 is the input frequency so how can we calculate that value from the, even, even if you do not have the curve with you uh, how to calculate that value simply put the addressable resolution here in the numerator and input frequency in the denominator and you will able you will be able to get that value okay now the question is another thing is this is how you calculate it and that is fine now two things i will say regarding this plot one that is see for a given output resolution addressable resolution ctp 600 what happens to the number of tones as we go on increasing the screen frequency so the question is like this so i am i am having a ctp which is having addressable resolution of 600 lpcm what or how many number of tones will be available for such a ctp which is having a high uh, 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 when we are printing that image using that ctp with increasing number of screen frequency that means 
what is happening to the number of tones for that CTP when we are progressively going on increasing the half tone frequency? Is the number of tone increasing or decreasing? It is decreasing. So for example, if we are choosing a 50 screen frequency, this many number of tones are available for 600 LPCM output resolution. But when we come to 100, when we choose a uh, half tone screen frequency of 100, then only this many number of tones are available. This corresponds to how much? 40 around. So initially it was nearly 140. but when we increase the screen frequency to 100, this became 40. And when we go to 150, it becomes much lower than that. Maybe this is only 10 or 20. Right? So why is this happening? Because you are using a half tone frequency uh, of while imaging, which is very high. But your CTP is not having num that much amount of resolution. That means there are not within the screen cell. Within the screen cell, there are not enough number of pixels or enough number of exposure dots to for the CTP to burn basically. That is why the resolution is going down or the, therefore the number of tones are going down. So that is what is happening. So you must ensure, here you see all these asterisk marks, see here all this entire 57, 37, 26, 5, 70, 12, 40, these asterisk marks indicate that you are not getting requisite number of tones for that particular output resolution and uh, you know a screen frequency combination. So if you are using a uh, output resolution uh, or a CTP having addressable resolution of 600, then naturally you should definitely use a screen frequency which is which which should be minimum 60. If anything, you know, greater than that, then of course your number of tones will suffer. That means number of tones will go down. That is the problem with this in in this in this uh, entire thing. Okay. So al always remember this thumb rule that is DPI should be minimum of 10 times that of the LPI to get a proper output uh, resolution image because our eyes are able to detect any the other our eyes are able to detect the difference between tones when we are seeing any tone less than which is less than 100 anything 100 any number of tones which is 100 or above that our eyes are not able to detect individual tones there okay so it will our eyes we will think okay there is a continuous tone and the appearance of that image will be very nice okay so that is what i wanted to uh, talk about here and from here we will go to another very important topic yes so here we have got what is known as the if you remember earlier i told you this term that is your modulation transfer function or optical transfer function to be to keep it in very general okay now, what is the concept of offset printing or, or any discretized printing for that matter, be it gravure, offset, your inkjet, whatever, whatever you have it, huh? or flexo. We are breaking down a continuous tone image. The continuous tone image may be a, you know, photograph that is a, a film-based photograph or your uh, digital image. We are ultimately breaking down that image into some discrete dots or some cells, whatever. In, now, whenever we are breaking down something into dots, that means we are breaking, I mean, we are, you know, making something which is continuous and we are discretizing it, right? So, our eyes will be able to make out the differences between those dots, right? In, if you take a newspaper and you, you know, uh, closely observe uh, the image which is given in the newspaper, sometimes we will be, you will be able to perceive those dots. Earlier in our childhood, we used to see this effect and we used to be very much amused we did not understand what that effect was but we used to be very much amused but nowadays newspaper printing technology has advanced so fast and so far that uh, even in newspapers which is you know printed on 35 40 45 gsm paper uh, it's it's very hard for us to detect those uh, half tone dots in the in those images so nonetheless if you take a look you will be able to very closely you will be able to understand or if you magnify it with the help of a magnifying glass or your glasses will be able to understand so ultimately that is something which we have to work with right we are working with a technology which breaks down a continuous tone image into small dots and then re i mean reproduces it on a piece of paper or on a film etc now our intention as a printing technologist is such that we do not want the viewer to understand that those dots exist when our intention is that whenever the viewer uh, watches this thing or views this image <coughs> He or she should, cons I mean, uh, it should appear to his or her eyes as if that is a, they are watching a continuous tone image or a very smooth image. Here we have a, uh, 
you know physical aspect of the human eyes with which we play with so one one where this concept comes from that we have to understand first then what physical aspect of eye i am talking about that i will explain later now, now see as i told you earlier also that with the ctps and all of this this uh, this uh, you know high resolution imaging technologies the cost in is a factor big factor you are buying your company is buying a 12000 dpi ctp uh, that is going to incur a huge cost on your company right and you have to justify it now on the other hand uh, another company may be uh, doing wonders with just a 1200 dpi ctp or a 2400 dpi ctp so what is the what is the necessity of buying something Uh, which is incurring a huge cost on your company's part right so here we need to understand the concept of uh, the eye's ability to resolve contrast okay so uh, let me give you a very simple example and this is the example which i will use further to deepen our concept these images that you are seeing in front of you this will make sense once i give you the example okay now consider you are reading a magazine a colorful magazine or a colorful book or whatever okay what what is the you know kind of viewing distance there what what is the distance with uh, which you are holding the book in front of you maybe it is around 30 to 235 uh, uh, cm away from you like this or what you are reading the book like this right now this is one example and the second example is uh, you are seeing something uh, like a billboard or if you know those huge flags that uh, these these uh, marketing agencies they put up along the road sides or along the buildings these hoardings big hoardings maybe uh, you know some ad campaign for some product or some films movies some news etc right you are seeing that also so there what do you think is the viewing distance there maybe you are watching it from a distance of uh, you know uh, like uh, 50 50 100 200 meters right sometimes even more than that so very long distance you are watching that you are viewing that uh, you know holding uh, from a very long distance apart right so just without going into the concept of the eyes ability to resolve these optical transfer functions and all this just tell me uh, using your you know common sense tell, tell me in which case i mean both of them are printed right your magazine your book that is printed the hoardings those flexes they are also printed right now if both of these are printed then they must have been discretized in some way or the other i'm not talking about the technology i'm just talking about whether they are, they need to be discretized before printing or not of course they if if something is to be printed it needs to be discretized into dots right dot cells whatever you like to call them right now so something if 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 something needs to be discretized there there must be some frequency some screen frequency that has been used to print that image is it not now tell me something just from your common sense that in which case the book or the hoarding in which of the two cases i will need to use a, uh, a screen frequency which is high and in which case i need to use a screen frequency of low how much screen frequency that we are not really concerned about i'm just talking about developing this basic concept of in which scenario or in which printing case uh, pr- printing situation we need to use uh, you know this uh, uh, your screen frequency which is high and in which case we need to use a screen frequency which is low can you tell me think about it for a minute here and and uh, pause the video here for a minute and think about the answer of course for the book you are watching the book you are reading the book you are seeing the images of the book from a very small uh, distance uh, you know away from you maybe 30 to 35 cm or 40 cm away from your eyes so if the screen frequency there was very low that means the resolution with which you printed was very low then naturally you would have understood those dots individual half tone dots with which the images were printed do you want that to happen no that is objection about those patterns are objection about you don't want that to see you want a very smooth image a continuous type of image right so you need to print the book Im- the images in the book or the newspaper or the this thing not newspaper else i'll keep newspaper away from this our discussion newspaper i mean uh, books magazines or these types of things with a higher resolution uh, uh, you know frequency you have to print it right but what about the flex 
this flex that you are printing, you are viewing that from a few hundred meters away. So naturally, the when you are viewing it from a great distance, those dots will not appear very easily to your eyes. So naturally, you can get away with printing that flex with a low resolution, relatively lower resolution screen, a relatively lower resolution uh, digitization uh, uh, process. Okay. So this is basic idea about what we can do or why it is important for us to learn about the eye's ability to resolve. See here from this concept you can hopefully understand what I have given over here. See, consider these to be dots. I will show images of dots also. So this is a dot, this is a dot, these are blank images, right? So our eyes, if we are viewing this uh, from, from this particular angle and the distance between this that is uh, between the center of the dot and the white area or distance between two dots is great, is quite great. That means the frequency here, screen frequency with which this has been printed is quite low because lesser number of dots are appearing in a given amount of space. So here we can easily identify those dots. That is what is presented over here. We can easily define or we can easily identify the light areas and the dark areas, shadow areas and these dots we can identify. But what if we reduce that distance between two dots? That means we are increasing the screen resolution, half tone resolution, or half tone screening uh, resolution frequency. So there, what you can see is it will be less visible. These these patterns, these individual dots, appearance of these dots will become less visible. Okay. So this this is what this represents basically. Our eyes have got that. Uh, sensation or we take advantage of this eye's ability to resolve uh, to our advantage in this case and this is known something known as the MTF which is very much used in developing of lenses for cameras this is known as the modulation transfer function so here is the contrast contrast here they say contrast contrast is a term that they use in MTF what it essentially is for us is the screen frequency actually so you see lines per millimeter we have given so it is essentially some form of the screen frequency which is given along the this thing <coughs> x-axis and this modulation means the eye is ability to, to, to detect individual dots or individual contrast right so our eyes ability to resolve will uh, depend upon the screen frequency used or the contrast used right so at low contrast or at low screen frequencies our eyes will be very easily able to detect those individual dots as we go on increasing the screen frequency naturally our eyes ability to resolve those individual dots will reduce and what and at and, and one point uh, we will not be seeing those individual dots we will be seeing a very continuous type of thing so this is a very basic idea about what it is now let us identify from here let us calculate mathematically what should be the uh, you know uh, screen frequency for a certain uh, 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 viewing distance in our case okay so yes this is this is what we were talking about really so <coughs> here you see this is a very nice thing that uh, they have given see this is our viewer side right now we are using a uh, first we are using a screen frequency of 200 this 200 we are able to uh, you know not detect the distance of 200 i mean uh, uh, this uh, screen frequency of the individual dots in a pattern which is having a screen frequency screen frequency of 200 lpcm uh, or 133 lpcm for a distance of 15 centimeters right we cannot identify the individual dots when we are seeing an image which is printed at 200 L <coughs> 200 lpcm frequency when we are viewing that image from a distance of 15 centimeter. Similarly, when we are seeing an image which is printed at 133 lpcm, uh, you know, uh, screen frequency, then we are, and we are viewing that uh, image from a distance of 22 centimeter, we are not able to detect the individual dots. Naturally, uh, when we are seeing an image which is printed at 85, uh, you know, LPCM screen frequency and we are viewing that from a distance of 35 uh, you know uh, centimeters then we are not able to detect the individual individual dots there and when similarly for 40 and similarly for 
20. That chart is also given here for your ready reference. Now, how to calculate that? That for a certain, when we are using a certain screen frequency, what should be the appropriate distance from which we need to measure? Now, it is not like this that we are we are printing at a random, you know, we are printing any image at a random screen frequency and we will say to the viewer or to the reader that okay you need to place this image at uh, this much distance. I cannot say I print a book, I print a magazine, I print a anything, some printed matter. I cannot say or you know instruct the reader to read that book from this much distance. It is up to the reader. It is up to the viewer that which distance he will choose, he will feel comfortable to read it from. Right? So ultimately we have to decide not the distance. We need to decide what will be the screen frequency we need to print the image in uh, so that you know we can consider uh, a so that the image the individual dots cannot be detected very easily from a certain distance. Naturally, a book needs to be printed or a magazine needs to be printed at a very high frequency, screen frequency, and a holding maybe which is viewed from a great distance away from us that may be printed with a relatively lower frequency. Let us do that calculation now. Okay. So yeah. So let me so I'll do the manual calculation now. So give me a moment. So let me just draw this. Okay. So I'll try to draw this. So this is let us say this is one dot. This is another dot. These are series of dots which are present given at a uh, certain distance apart. Now our our uh, condition is that or our intention is we need to calculate the minimum screen frequency such that individual dots are not visible from a given viewing distance. This is our problem statement. Okay. So let us now proceed the problem in a certain manner. We need to, so ultimately what we need to do? We need to find out the distance between these two dots, right? These two dots, we need to find out the distance. Let us say our, we are watching from this. This is the v1 right this is the viewer and we are watching these dots from here okay so now what we do we need to do first we will not initially calculate the distance between the two dots we will calculate initially the distance between a dot and the center of the dot and the center of the white space between that okay so what we need to do we need to draw a line perpendicular from the viewer to this dot why perpendicular because the reason is because we are watching that dot straight ahead like this okay and similarly we need to draw another line from starting from the eye to the center of this blank space okay and we need to join these two points so now if in some way or the other also so this i have established this is a 90 degree this is a perpendicular okay now I have established something that is my intention is to find out the distance between these two dots that is this particular distance right I am finding out the distance between the center of the dot and the center of the blank space so ultimately if I am able to find this particular distance this particular distance then if I and if I double it then automatically this entire distance between the two dots can be found out that is what I wanted to find out okay now this is your viewing distance so right this is your viewing distance is it not? This is your viewing distance. You are viewing this dot, you know, uh, uh, in, in this perpendicular manner, right? Now, normally, let us consider that we are viewing this. Uh, let us assume that we are viewing this for uh, 35 centimeter distance. Normally, let us assume this uh, for this uh, particular scenario. You can assume any other thing also. This is the first uh, uh, thing that you need to consider. So, normally, 35 centimeter is a very good example of. What you what is the viewing distance in case of a book or a magazine which is read from a very close up distance now another thing that you need to consider over here is that now this uh, another thing i need to tell is that this vd that is a viewing distance will vary depending upon what you are actually going to print 
So if you are going to print a book or a magazine, then 35 centimeter is a good distance. Normally, that is the distance 30, 35 centimeter, maybe um, somewhere around that. But if you are printing a, let us say, a, uh, you know, a hoarding or a flex, then that distance may be uh, 146 centimeter, 140, not 146 centimeter, much more than that actually. So you need to print it at a, uh, you need to view it at a much uh, greater distance. So VD will depend upon what is your use case. So in this case, we are considering that we are printing a book or a magazine. That is why we are using this particular 35 centimeter as the viewing distance. Okay. This will change depending upon your depending upon your necessity. Now another thing that I need to tell is the angle of resolution. That is this particular angle. This angle, right? <coughs> that is minimum, you know, uh, uh, angle that is uh, used or that is. Uh, uh, available for viewing a particular object by your eyes. Now another thing that I need to consider is this particular angle as I told this is the angle of resolution which is I think let us say angle of resolution is this is given this is standard for the human eye that is it is the minimum uh, you know uh, degree viewing dig, uh, viewing angle which is available for the human eye. You have seen in this TV ads that uh, our TV offers, this company's TV offers a viewing angle of 180 degree. So that means what? Our Normally our eyes are able to see more than 180 degree. I think it is about uh, 200 or something like that. So that minimum angle that our eyes can see is 0 0.025 degrees. Okay. There is a minimum angle. Now, two things are known. That this distance is known. We have assumed that for this particular case and this angle is known. Right. <coughs> This angle is known. Now, what we need to do is we need to calculate this distance or this arm. So, it's a very you know simple trigonometrical problem. Consider this triangle having a right angle at this angle, right? So, naturally, this line. Let us let me mark this. Okay, so let me mark this as A, B, and C. So, we are dealing here with a uh, you know right angle triangle A, B, C having a right angle at B, is it not? So my intention is to find out the arm B, C. So how to calculate that? Simply if I write tan of this AR will be equal to, how much will that be? BC divided by VD. Therefore, BC is equal to BD into tan of AR. That is what it is. So, if you now plug in all these values of VD, what is VD? It is 35 centimeters and tan of 0 0.025 degrees if you calculate that will uh, come about. Let me just quickly go ahead and calculate with my calculator. One second. So, tan of 0 0.025 I think it is coming as 0 0.0004 something. So naturally, this will become 0 0.015 uh, centimeters, right? So that means what? The value of BC now becomes 0 0.015 centimeters. That means this distance, distance between the center of the dot and the center of the white space, blank space, that becomes 0 0.015 centimeters. Now, our intention was not to find out this one. Our intention was to find out the distance between two dots. So simply, how can we find out the distance? between two dots will be equal to twice the value of BC that means 0 0.030 centimeter. So this will be our value. This, this is what we wanted for. Now we calculated what is the distance between the two dots. Right? How from this value how to calculate the resolution of this thing. If the distance between two dots is given then how many dots can be there in a, in a linear distance or a linear uh, space or a unit space, not linear space, but unit space that can also be created. How to calculate that? Simply calculate the reciprocal of this value. So what will be the reciprocal of the value? So what do, did we want to calculate? That is the screen frequency, right? Hopefully this is understood. How did we calculate? We calculate this as the reciprocal of the distance between two dots. Why? Because if we, we calculated the distance between two dots, right? Now, 
we now want to find out how many dots simple unitary method how many distance between two dots is now now how many dots will be present in a unit distance simply reciprocal of that uh, distance between two dot value will uh, come up to be like that so that becomes 1 by 0 0.030 lines per centimeter so that will come roughly to be 3333 line per centimeter if you want to calculate convert it into uh, lpi that comes about 84 lpi so this is what your value is that means for this situation where your viewing distance is 35 centimeter there you need to have or you need to print your uh, images with a resolution greater than 84 lpi only then when the person is reading or viewing that uh, printed image from a distance of 35 centimeter they will be not able to detect the individual dots and the image will appear to be very much continuous to their eyes so this is how we calculate this hopefully this is clear so now let us match our answer with the value that we obtained in the previous uh, scenario see this is the chart so this is the least viewing distance column so at 35 centimeter we calculated what should be the uh, this thing what should be the uh, uh, minimum uh, screen frequency it should be greater than 84 lpi is it not so let us check yes for 35 it is 85 lpi that means our answer is correct so similarly you can che uh, check and test this method using the other distances also so for that uh, 146 how much lpi or how much lpcm you are getting so if i if you are asked this question you can uh, leave it in lpcm but since we are always measuring this uh, screen frequency by convention in lpi that is why yeah, it is always recommended to convert the values convert your answers into uh, your uh, lpi units basically okay yes so now we are in the last part of digital half toning and this is quite interesting where we will actually be comparing the quality between am digital am and digital fm prints okay so and we will be seeing that what is the basic difference between in terms of quality and where to use with those things we will see now you see on this side and now tell me pause the video here for a minute and tell me i have not marked it it's a good thing that i have not marked it tell me which one is uh, two pictures of the same image you are seeing now which one has been printed with aim screening and which one has been printed with fm screening just tell me that this has been printed with am screening this has been printed with fm screening see all these patterns these artifacts these moires have occurred okay one type of effect is moire but in case of fm those patterns will not appear i have already told you this while talking about the data diffusion technique in fm technique uh, fm screening why because <coughs> you see the positioning of those uh, dots in case of fm screening that is actually randomized and the distance between dots are also randomized so normally you will not see those type of uh, kind of those uh, patterns or like uh, moir and all this in case of your fm screening but these moir patterns may occur in your aim screening if you have not screened your uh, i mean uh, not angled your uh, screens properly okay next rosette is another pattern that you are able to see now you might say that okay there are patterns here also but this is since i have converted this into uh, you know fm using my uh, own algorithm so that that might have led but normally in you know industry grade half toning techniques fm screening does not really cause any objectionable patterns like aim screening so another uh, you know artifact that is present in your aim screening uh, again are these rosettes you can see all over this especially in the highlight areas is a more visible those patterns are not available or not visible or not, does not occur actually in FM screen. So uh, next we have got the quality. In terms of quality, I should not say this to be as quality, but you know when we are talking about uh, the smoothness of appearance of AIM and FM screening, you will always notice that the smoothness of appearance in case of your FM is much more better because there in case of AIM, the number of, uh, I mean, the size of the dots is increasing. So. Uh, in case of your 
shadow areas there may be some uh, uh, appearance may not be that good but in case of fm because the uh, uh, size of the dot remains the same it causes a more smoother and more continuous type of appearance in your images that you print also in case of your uh, uh, consistency consistency of print i think i have one more slide of that consistency yeah in case of consistency also consistency means that when you once uh, you know start printing let us say you have started printing at this point and you have reached uh, uh, these uh, uh, sheets over here this is nearly 500 sheets after 500 sheets of printing in the press there when you measure the density this is density of black this is density of magenta density of cyan and density of <coughs> yellow so all these densities over time in case of your fm screening will not change much it will almost remain consistent there will be not very very high increase or very high decrease in your uh, you know solid tones uh, when you are printing with fm screening so that is another advantage of fm screening over am screening okay next we have got your uh, you know uh, then again this is kind of a appearance you see that here you will see this uh, rosette patterns are appearing in the face and in the skin tones here such patterns are not appearing it is more smoother in appearance in comparison to fm is more smoother in appearance in comparison to am screening okay again another thing that uh, another disadvantage one disadvantage of your uh, you know fm screening is the fact that uh, when you are uh, going for uh, you know tint printing that is uh, grayscale printing and all that uh, over here along this these are the dot percentages and these are the output values right so your output dot percentages so this is what you intended to print right and this is what you actually got actual print so this is much like a characteristic curve like print characteristic curve like that okay so now what you see over here is that this is what was your perfect shape this is what you wanted right this is what you uh, this is your dot gain curve really this is what you wanted but after printing you see your aim screen has got this much dot gain but your fm screen has got this very high dot gain why because the reason behind why fm screening got, you know we often see larger uh, amount of dot gain in fm screening is that especially when these dots are accumulated especially in the shadow and sometimes in the mid tone areas because the dots are very small the amount of ink in those dots in those areas where the conglomeration or accumulation of dots are quite high that cannot be really controlled so if that cannot be controlled naturally the ink spread the chances of the ink to uh, uh, you know spread over that area also increases therefore especially in the mid tone areas as you can see where the conglomeration dots are quite high there you can see that uh, fm has the highest or the greater amount of dot gain in comparison to aim now you might ask that why it is not happening in uh, highlight and uh, shadow area very simple in highlight area number of dots are less therefore the chances of dot spread is quite low and in shadow area number of dots in the shadow areas in case of aim number of dots means i am only talking about the fm only so in case of shadow area the number of dots is quite high so that means all the dots are almost uh, you know one over the other so even if there is dot gain we are not able to detect it because the placement of dots are so close that dot gain or dot spread cannot be measured so ultimately in mid tone areas the dot gain is high actually for any print condition mid tone i mean in the mid tones the dot gain is high because of the reason i told you that is true universally true for aim as well as for fm so this is why the fm uh, has one disadvantage in terms of the dot gain okay next we have got which has got the faster drying because this fm is got has got a smaller amount of uh, dot area that means the amount of ink on all those uh, dots will also be lower therefore it will <coughs> it will take lower amount of time for the ink to dry in those fm uh, prints okay next uh, yeah so this is the topographical view of the uh, fm dot and the corresponding uh, you know aim dots and all so that is understandable next it's very important that is your miss registration miss registration if ha if it happens in aim it can be very easily detected because you see these rosettes with hollow center will become rosettes with particular center 
with particular center and your image you can very easily detect that there has been a misregistration in newspapers you will see sometimes there is misregistration easily it is easily it is detected but in case of fm because the dots themselves are very much randomized even if there is some misregistration problem that is not objectionable that you cannot always understand i'll show you this example see here you will see that this there has been some sort of uh, you know this is okay image this is a you know kind of magnified image of this card this is kind of an okay image this is am and this is fm but this is where misregistration has occurred see misregistration has occurred especially for all this yellow and this cyan misregistration has occurred right and there are dots there are rosettes with dots only then you can understand that misregistration has occurred and also visually also you can understand but even if misregistration has occurred in fm screen you are not able to detect that that much as you would be able to detect in case of your am screen so there is a fm screening offers a huge advantage in that that it does not uh, it it helps us to to uh, you know uh, visually minimize the impact of uh, misregistration in these uh, images after printing and of course uh, uh, fm screening has got has can lead to this I will, I will explain later on when we study about color science and color management all that but ultimately the gamut means how much amount of color can be reproduced by any particular device right so the number of colors that can be reproduced by your fm screen is higher than that what can be achieved using your am screen because the number of dots and the sorry size of dots in a fm screening is quite low it can go up to as low as 5 micron it's very expensive to print it's very difficult to print at 5 micron but it can theoretically go and it can practically also go to 5 micron so uh, the number of dots uh, see sorry number of colors that you can reproduce using that fm technique is uh, higher than what can be achieved in, in your fm screen so don't uh, worry about what this image means i'll explain when we study color science later on and uh, of course uh, yeah so Yes, the another reason why uh, this picture explains nicely that why this does not happen in case of uh, uh, the number of colors obtained in case of uh, FM is higher is that the amount of uh, uh, unprinted area that is non-image area in case of your AM is considerably higher than in your than in case of your uh, FM screening and that white area. So consider this that when you are printing something single color solid tint. A solid print and you are printing the same color with the let us say 50% dot okay for FM screen so what happens is the appearance automatically changes between the solid and the half tone why this happens because when you are printing in half tone not only light coming from the ink is getting deflected and coming to your eyes but light from the white areas is also interfering with the incoming light thereby changing the appearance of the uh, color but in case of FM screen this amount of white space is lower than comparatively lower in in comparison to your aim screen therefore this interference of the from the uh, you know white spaces that is the substrate that is reduced to great extent and thereby the purity of color or the hue of the color can be increased substantially leading to the uh, you know leading to the uh, expansion of the possible number of colors that can be uh, printed and that can be viewed using your fm screen okay so with this we come to the end of the half toning technique in the next uh, upcoming lectures we will we will talk in a lot of detail of in uh, regarding your uh, this uh, various uh, pixel based software and your layout softwares and font management systems etc so hopefully you understood this lecture and uh, thank you for listening to me thank you